It's time for the potato harvest in Weinau, two hours drive from Berlin. Vegetables belonging to city dwellers grow and ripen on IP Garden's half hectare of land. That's right, IP, Internet Protocol Garden. Urbanites can farm crops here without ever having to set foot on the sandy soil. Gardeners on location take care of the dirty work. Each online farmer rents a 16 square meter plot for a euro a day. The would-be internet farmers can choose from a variety of crops, from lettuce to flowers. I used to cultivate a plot of land with my family, but the problem was that we couldn't water it. During the week, we were in the city and only got out there on weekends. Then on the internet I came across the Farmville simulation game where you plant and water and so on. And I knew I had to turn it into reality. IP Garden provides its remote farmers with a mass of data. Once a week, a drone even supplies aerial pictures. It gives users an overview of the state of their crops. Closed circuit TV guards the farm around the clock. And each of the 56 individual plots is equipped with sensors. The measuring devices register moisture levels in the soil, exposure to sunlight and air pressure. The data is transmitted via Bluetooth to a computer which collates the information and puts it online. The gardener is sitting at his home computer and needs to get his plants enough water. These parameters help him decide whether the soil is moist enough, how high is the electrical conductivity, what's the coefficient and how are my plants looking. These seventh grade students at the Platanus School in Berlin's Pankow district also want to know how their garden's doing. They've rented an IP garden plot. Each student has been growing their favorite vegetable on a one meter square allotment. They can call up the data on IP Garden's online platform and water their patch with a mouse click. The program also tells you if you've had an infestation, things like beetles, snails, whatever. And that way you know what you have to do. Especially in the city, not everyone has got a garden where they can do something like this. So being able to do it online is really practical. The class's IP Garden project is part of its science work and technology curriculum. Today's lesson is about plants. The students are learning which types of vegetables are best planted next to each other. How can I feed myself properly without harming or being unfair to others, for instance in Africa or other places? How can I feed myself without damaging other people or the environment? That's the message we want to convey here. But first, you have to get your crop going. Not so easy via the Internet. <coughs> I basically thought it would be dead easy. I sit at my computer and press the water button or whatever. But now I know that some plants aren't compatible. My plant isn't compatible with cabbages and eggplants. Annika's yellow tomatoes need some support out in the field. Via app, she informs the gardener. He can see the tasks he has to perform on each square meter. Today, it's fertilizing using a brew of stinging nettles. Decided digitally, carried out on location. Practical, attractive, but a concept that also has detractors. When you put forward the IP garden principle, you often hear, I'd rather have my kids dig around in the soil themselves. Fact is, though, that neither they nor their kids actually go digging. It's a longing that's often not realized. So in that sense, the IP garden is a very good and sensible alternative. It certainly is a healthy alternative. The online farmers can pick up their crop or have it delivered. The surplus is donated to a Berlin homeless charity.